My friend brought me to Ghana, and um, when I arrived in Ghana, I discovered that um, he was into fraud. He didn't explain it to me that I was coming to do fraud. So when I came, I didn't like the nature of the work. So it brought a problem between me and him, and he was disappointed at me for not queuing in to the business he brought me to do. So um, he threw me out of the house. That was right there in Medina. So when he threw me out of the house, I became homeless in a country I knew nobody. And he threw me out of the house, seizing my phones and things. So sleeping on the street, I made some group of boys and I explained to them the situation I was into. And uh, they had pity on me. And they took me to the ghetto, there at Wish Junction took me to the ghetto and they showed me a place I will be passing nights where I will be sleeping. So I begin to sleep there and um, sleeping there comes to a time I discover that people around there, if you are not smoking and drinking, you look as if um, you are not among. You see, they see you somehow. So sometimes the smoke and they pass it on to me before you know what is happening. I can't resist it and um, I started smoking weed and cigarettes. So by smoking weed and cigarettes, it gets to a time I now know what is crack cocaine through the same people. I'm a pastor. Because um, I didn't have the transportation to go back to my country. And I was, my phone was being taken from me by that my friend that brought me to Ghana. So I couldn't have any contact to contact my people over there in Nigeria to tell them what I'm going through. I found myself into stealing. Yeah. One of my friends introduced me into stealing here in Ghana and, um, we were selling people's phone, mobile phones, and bad rebel. We go to shops where someone is sleeping. We walk into the shop and we take any valuable that reached us. And it gets to the time I was being caught around there in Rich Junction and I was stripped naked. I was beating and beating to the extent that <laughs> I was half dead, half alive. And um, before you know it, they start contemplating on how to set me ablaze. Turkey so can kill. I have, I, have, I have witnessed, I have been an eyewitness for someone that died through Turkey. You see, yeah, it can kill. But um, in my own case, the hand of God was involved. That was why I was able to undergo my Turkey. It destroys the body, destroys the body, yeah, inside of you, the lungs, the ribs, the heart, and so on and so forth. It destroys it and it eats your body. If, if I've had the picture of when I came to choosing, you would have seen that, wow. You wouldn't have believed that it's me attacking, yeah. I, I see suicide as the only option because I couldn't bear it anymore. Already I'm alive, but I know I'm dead. Yeah, because when I'm standing, I'm looking at myself at the mirror, how bushy my hair is and uh, how dirty I am, and knowing that I have no hope. Anywhere I'm standing, I don't know where I'm going from there. I just walk around and when I see something, I pick up. So, I came to a point that I, I, I suggested that killing myself is the only option. But um, something happened that um, in that junction of confusion, when I got no option and I was depressed and suffered depression, um, choosing gave me direction that um, leads to solution, which brought me salvation. 
Wow, um, my sobriety is priceless. <laughs>